So I'm going to start a new game on regular Grounded, and then we're going to talk about some of the different settings that you should have on both for practice and for your own runs. We are at the start of the game. We've started a new Grounded run, regular Grounded run. The first thing I want to talk about are your control settings. For your controls, there are some things that I suggest you play with, especially your camera, your aiming sensitivity. These four settings are, in their default settings, are actually not very good. And just how bad they are also depends on the, the, the system you're playing on. If you're playing on a PS4, they're terrible. If you're playing on a PS5, you might be able to uh, work with them. But let me let me reset. I'm going to reset this stuff to default so you can see. So on the default settings here, you'll see aim sensitivity is at five. This aiming acceleration scale is set up to ten, and the ramp power scale is set to five. Now, these two settings in particular control how quickly your reticle moves as you're aiming um, when you slam the slam it over to one side or another. The problem with it is it essentially means that when you are in hot combat and trying to find the target on something, it is incredibly easy to overshoot your target. This is a, a real problem when you're playing on 30 FPS, which is what you have for the PS4. But it even on the PS5, which by default is going to be running at 60 FPS, is a problem. So I strongly recommend you turn these all the way down to 1. For aiming sensitivity, also, a lot of people, including myself, like it on lower sensitivities. I turn mine down to 3. I recommend you play around with it. What's going to happen as a result is you will, when you're aiming, it will be a much slower aim. So you'll have a lot more precision control on your aiming. The drawback to that, which some people don't like, is if you have to rapidly change your aim all, you know, for a large angle, it's going to be very slow. You should drop the aim, spin, and then re-aim in that case. Another decision you want to make is what kind of reticle you have. You'll notice I have mine set to the simple reticle, which is simply a dot. The default reticle, you'll see is this little circle. Uh, that shows you that size of the circle shows you the range of, you know, sort of random area within which the bullet can land. Now, in theory, that's going to make you more accurate in determining where your shot is going to land. I personally have found that a simple reticle, some, for some reason, I shoot better with it on simple reticle. So that's what I use. But, you know, again, play around with it, see what works for you. When you play on grounded, by default, the awareness indicators here are off. And when you do an actual run, they need to be off It's part of the settings that you will have to do for this. Right? However, when you are practicing, habit setting awareness indicators to stealth can be a very useful way of routing out an area because you can you can tell when somebody's about to spot you. One thing that you might consider turning on is the persistent center dot. This is intended for most people with motion sickness, and therefore it's just fine in the run. However, if you have it on, you will find that it is much easier to pre-aim. You, you basically put that dot where, you know, on somebody's head, and then you can get a snapshot. All right, so you can see the dot here. In the center. Now, if I just line, I'm going to wait. She's going to pop up. But notice, if I just line up the dot with her head. 
Future Polly here, stepping in because I did a terrible job of explaining what's going on here in the live stream. So when I'm using the persistent center dot, I'm pressing L2 and then very rapidly hitting R2. I'm relying on the fact that the gun is going to come up with its initial aim exactly where the center dot is. So just press L2, tap R2 almost immediately, come then release and go back down into cover so that I don't get shot by the second guy. Yo, Dina, assignments. <clears throat> Just give me a minute. We get your girlfriend. You'll notice also that I'm skipping a lot of cutscenes here. Uh, most people who do challenge runs for this game have played it multiple times already. We know the story. Uh, there are a lot of cutscenes that take a lot of time. No real point watching them over yet again. So we do a lot of skipping of cinematics. One of the things you will find, though, is even on the PS5, which is what I'm playing on, there is not a lot of optimization in terms of the load screen. So if you skip cinematics, there are going to be plenty of times where there are these long loading screen delays. One way you can reduce that is by letting certain cutscenes play a little bit into the cutscene before you skip it. Or some of them, if you just sort of hover here on the skip cinematic, it will, when you finally hit yes, it will go much quicker. Right, so this can be a way to speed up your play a bit, but you're still going to be waiting. All right. One of the things that you will discover when you are doing grounded permadeath attempts is that you find yourself in Jackson a lot. And it will become a little bit tedious pretty rapidly. And so you do probably want to try to get through it relatively quickly. So what you see me doing here is something that speedrunners do. We're not going to do speedrun strats in general, but to get through Jackson, this is faster than just jogging. And so what we're doing is we're doing a little double tap of L1 and then melee, a melee punch, yeah, right, to, to go. And that kind of propels Abby forward no, as we're going through here. Keep going like this. And again, you don't have to do any of this movement tech if you don't want to. This is just a way to go a little bit faster. Consider it an opportunity to work on your... All right, so we go through here and we get grabbed. Now, in these combat encounters, you might be used to what happens on lower difficulties where you will, it will come up with a prompt telling you dodge, right? You don't get those prompts on Grounded. So you just have to develop a sense of when to go. Now, as I said, you can simply run through here, but I want to talk a little bit about the melee mechanics in the game. One thing, one mistake that a lot of people make when they come to Grounded after playing this game on lower difficulties is that they've gotten used to spamming the inputs for the melee or the dodge. That might get you through an encounter on moderate difficulty, but on grounded, it is generally not going to work. When you spam melee, this game does not simply like count only the most recent punch after you get control back. What it's doing is it's stacking the inputs so there are times when if you simply punch 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 uh your enemy is going to react it's going to push you off or 
run away or do a swing at you and you're going to get hit or the punch is not going to land. So you want to develop the habit of only punching exactly the number of times you actually intend to punch. So I'll, I'll show you for this first one where we get up. Dodge, punch, 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 right? Now that one was easy because he didn't, he did just four punches, he doesn't swing back. The next one will probably swing back. Remember, this is a tutorial in how to do all this stuff. So dodge, punch, see I'm, she didn't swing, sometimes she does, now she's swinging. And we're, we're done, okay? You can also simply run through this. I'll show you the run through. So instead of fighting this first one, we just run. Straight in the house, and we're safe. Easy peasy. Now, for this next runner here, um, the runner will stay in place until you move past a certain point. So if you want to make your life easy where he's not running at you, just shoot him from back here. It's only one shot to kill him. The only downside to this is he can kind of block your way. It can be a little bit of a pain to get past him. So if you if you move forward and let him come at you, he'll he'll clear the way for you. I do recommend grab this health kit just in case you take any extra damage in the next area. If you if you're doing everything right, you're not going to need it, but you might as well. Might as well take it, just in case. Alright, so these also, you can run past. If you run past all of them, though, you do alert the um, runners in the next section. And so, I like just to stealth kill everybody here, pick up the ammo that gets dropped, just to make your life, again, make your life easier. Takes a little longer. Um, before, when you get to the top of the stairs, if you don't want to alert the runner, crouch before you go down these stairs. If you trot down the stairs, you will alert this runner. Now there's a second runner that's out there in the garage. Um, on PS5, it tends not to come in here very often. It's very, uh, ra rarely it will. On PS4, it almost always comes in and looks. So again, if you don't want to alert him, you want to pull that first runner we killed behind a sofa for it. Alright. So that at least gives us some extra ammo. And um, now when we jump over here, these runners are not alerted. And again, you can run through this if you want, um, or you can stealth kill them. I think I'm just going to run through here. Let me just, just go. Let me just go. The only thing you have to be careful of here is that you time this um, dive correctly so that you get out before you get a slap. One quick note before we go into the supermarket. The strats that I use here don't use any ammo. Any ammo that Ellie picks up along with any resources she picks up, she will carry with her to Seattle. Unless Abby dies after this point in the story. In other words, Abby dying will reset Ellie's inventory and she'll show up to Seattle with nothing. You'll have to pick up everything you need downtown. There is enough downtown for you to do that. It's not a disaster, but Try not to die as Abby if you're playing per chapter. Once we hop in this room, we're going to find a runner chewing on the moose's leg. Now, you can sneak in here and 
I mean, the easiest way to do it is hop over here, crouch, sneak up behind the runner, and just stealth kill him. That does take a while, and it really isn't necessary. We can just run up to him. He'll alert, but notice, um, we just get a strike on him there, and he's dead. Now, if you do that, just beware that if you're too late, if he alerts and there's a, a pause, you might have to actually fight him with, like, multiple melee strikes and stuff. But if you can get there quickly, you'll just get an automatic strike on him. All right. In the next area, this is a bottle throwing tutorial. No need to get fancy here. Now there is a way that you can hold on to that bottle. Speedrunners use that trick, but I don't think it's really necessary. All right, we're about to hop over into this other area. You can see they haven't started. They'll start moving as soon as we hop over. We're going to do them all in stealth, which takes longer, but is safer for you. So Ellie drops into a crouch. You don't have to do anything. And then immediately people start moving. I like to go for this woman on the left first. Dina will take out this woman on the right. And then we're immediately going to go hop in this window. Again, just stay stay crouched the whole time. This runner will pause here and we can get him. Now, if, you, if you're a little late, you'll see there's a runner standing there. If you're a little late and this runner has started moving forward, um, make sure you pull him back. Because notice Dina killed another one over there for us. It was very handy because now we can just take this one out. The same way we took out the first one. And we're done. I'm gonna go to the bodies that Dina killed just to see if there is any ammo drops. Sometimes you get you get ammo here. Now, another thing that happens here, Dina likes to take a very long time before she hops up on this route. If you sort of crouch here, she tends to go a lot faster to this. We need to get the alcohol out of this. If you want to get it a little bit faster, do triangle L1 triangle, and Ellie will stick her hand That's right alcohol. through the couple of rags. cabinet instead of opening it slowly, peering inside. Just an annoying thing. We also have to craft a health kit here. However, we don't actually, we have to start to heal. We have to, to appease Dina by healing a little bit. But we don't actually have to fully heal. So you notice I just sort of wrapped it around a couple times. We still have that health kit. In there. It will carry over with us Next to, time. you know, to Seattle. And that just, you don't really need it if you do a safe strats in the supermarket. You, the you are low health at this point, even though you can't see it since Grounded doesn't have your HUD on. But you don't need it. Let's save it for the next area. All these spores mean they've been here for a while. Now, in this area, again, there are a lot of different ways you can do this. One thing to be careful of, the clickers on Grounded have much more sensitive hearing, and they also move faster than they do on lower difficulty levels, right? As long as you are crawling prone, you're safe unless the clickers are going, are barking right at you. Again, unlike part one, the clicker's echolocation actually works. Okay. Now, what I just did there, I'm gonna pause this for a minute just to, to catch up here. You'll notice the way that I killed that clicker from prone is very important. A lot of people make a mistake. They think they have to uh, come at the clicker crouch. You do not. All you need to do is go fully prone, crawl up to that clicker, 
and spam triangle. If you go back and look at my um, inputs, you'll see I just crawled up. I did not crouch by pressing circle before I grabbed that clicker. I just moved up to it, spamming triangle. When you get close enough, Ellie will automatically stand up, grab the clicker, and give you that stealth grab. That is a far safer way of killing a clicker ungrounded than trying to crouch and do it that way. Now, for this one, I'm going to show you a second way to kill him, and that is with a double melee. If you stun the clicker and one knife shot won't kill it, however, two will. So we can we can use this, you know, in a number of places where you, um, you know, bottle a brick plus a melee stab, you know, you know, twice, and the clicker is dead. Right? Save a little time rather than sneak it up behind it for a stealth grab. Once we drop in here, everybody's going to start to move. This clicker turn, or this runner, I mean, turns and looks at us, so I wait for after until she turns. Now, if you immediately grab this runner, the, the runner on the other side of the shelves will hear you. So what I was doing there is I was waiting for that second runner, the one that's moving, to appear in the, the hole between the shelves. And that means they're far enough away not to hear the kill. Then we go through this one. We grab them. Now we're going to go back into the back room. Now, the clicker that you see over there on the left will wander outside here until you head into the back room yourself. Once you head into the back room, the clicker then its path will change and it will start to come into the back room. So I want to grab this runner here before the clicker gets in. So I don't have a whole lot of time to waste. It's not super tight, but you can't you can't dawdle. Now we're just going to wait here. And this is going to demonstrate another this next thing for grabbing this clicker is going to demonstrate another important thing for killing clickers here. I'm not going to move the left stick. I'm waiting for the clicker. I'm just spamming triangle. And when it gets close enough, Ellie will automatically move forward. If you move out before you grab that clicker, there's a very good chance that you will alert the clicker because you move too fast for that. So um, if, you're, if you're hiding behind some place and you know that an infected person is going to come walking right by you just, just stay in cover and spam triangle and you'll automatically grab them when they come past okay. now i'm also waiting i could have grabbed that runner uh when i first came forward but the clicker would have heard that and it just makes timing a little bit tight so we're waiting for one extra rotation of this runner i'm gonna grab it when it gets back here we can just go around here. All right, so now we only have this one clicker left. You'll see I have a full bottle right here, and I'm going to deliberately run so this clicker hears me. Again, you don't have to do this. You could stealth kill it, but this just saves you a little time. Once we get a lock on aim... Grab, grab that, please. There we go. And repeat. All right. Now, two warnings if you're going to do this bottle stab, bottle stab thing. Um, one is you need to stab the clicker from the front. If you come around behind the clicker and stab it, if the clicker's still alive, or like on your first stab, when, there's a weird glitch in this game where when the clicker comes out of its so out. An, uh, stun animation, you won't be able to move. And so the clicker will just turn and kill you. So if you're going to do this, make sure you you attack the clicker face on. 
for this. Okay. The other thing that I did want to mention is, which many of you probably know already, is the lock-on aim on the throwables. Uh, you'll saw you saw that my reticle. I did not use L2 to aim where I was throwing. If you use that to aim on a moving enemy, you are almost certainly going to miss. Uh, the L2 for aiming of a throwable is really only useful when you are aiming at a static target that is a long way away. Like if I want to put a bottle to make a lure in a specific spot, um, or if somebody's just sitting there and they're a long way away, then yes, aim. But for enemies that you want to stun, you just need to get close enough for the reticle to automatically lock on and hit, then just hit R2 to, to kill him. Okay, we are at the first workbench in the game, and so I thought I would take this opportunity to just talk a little bit about upgrades and grounded and, you know, what you may or may not want to do. First of all, Dina forces you to use the up the, this workbench or she won't unblock the door, but you don't have to actually upgrade anything, and I don't recommend that you do at this point. <clears throat> really, realistically, the rifle and the uh, pistol are the ones that you probably, you know, like maybe you would want to up, at some point up, get the scope on the rifle or accuracy on the rifle. For the pistol, with the strats that I'm going to be showing you, you're really not going to be using the pistol for anything much at all. So I wouldn't recommend wasting any parts on it, right? Just leave them, accumulate them for later. You can make a decision afterwards on it. All right, we're back at Abbey with the Horde here. Uh, one small point, until you actually start moving forward, the infected aren't going to come after you. Like, you, you could actually sit here, walk away from your console, and you would be safe. But as soon as you start moving, they will come in. So just run through. So after you fall through here, Runner is going to grab Abby, and you're going to get a QTE prompt. But it turns out that it's a fake prompt. Joel will save you here no matter what you do. You'll notice I'm not pressing square at all. And, and Joel will save you. So. Oh, you can take this pipe or not, depending on what you want. There are going to be five runners that jump in the window here, but we don't need to stay to fight them. We can just run through here. And again, um, unless you really want to fight them, just lead them all over to, to, to Joel and Tommy. Right? There's not really any need to engage with them. Right? If you if you kind of run past Joel and Tommy, the the runners should mostly yep. Did they did, did it? Okay. I mean, we could heal if we want to be fully healed. Finish healing here. Wait for, up there, the wait for Tommy. That's our way out. You see a way up there? Here, use this. Hey, girl. You also don't have to help. Put this on, it just makes things you know, faster. Now, and once this, side, this wave starts, um, I don't recommend you, you try to kill anybody except possibly the runner that drops down to kill Tommy. So, oh, I mean, if somebody follows you, go ahead and, and kill him. Joel can bring him over to you. Now, once, once runners start dying, that clicker spawns in, right? Again, you don't have to kill that clicker. You don't have to kill any of these runners. 
you can just run in circles until uh, Tommy gets the gondola. Uh, maybe Joel will kill the, the clicker. Maybe not. The only thing is you do want to kind of keep an eye on where the clicker is so that it's not right where you try to, you know, jump up. But just run around in circles. I got you. You should be safe. Stay close to us. Where are we going? It's this one. Come on. They're everywhere. Don't start out. Head for those doors. Through here. Let's go. All right. And once we get to that point, uh, that's all the combat in Jackson. Everything else in Jackson is simply a walking simulator.